you're all very welcome and um, it's, a, it's a pleasure and an honour to be here to be representing um, the Irish hemp industry at this very important and instrumental um, first hemp industry led conference so I'm delighted to be here. Uh, so I, I suppose my, my presentation is really about where we are and where we're going, where we and how we've got here actually. And it, it's a little bit, um, it's a bit of a quagmire to be honest with you. And I'll try to keep it, uh, make it as clear as possible. Um, but I guess that's, that. Yeah, I'll do my best. <laughs> so uh, some of you will be familiar with this man. He's Horace Plunkett. He is um, the founder. His pr um, his, what do you call it, his um, legacy to, the, uh, to Ireland, to the Irish farming industry, is um, the cooperative movement. And uh, in around about the early 1900s, he was very active in setting up co-ops in Ireland. Um, within about 30 years of that, hemp was illegal. Hemp was deemed to be illegal. Um, so where there was an industry already, a burgeoning young industry already starting um, within 30 years of the dairy industry setting up, if you know what I mean, the dairy cooperative movement, um, the hemp industry was wiped out, okay? So if you, if you imagine the uh, Im amount of investment in that 100 plus years that has gone into the dairy industry, that was limited by, for the hemp industry by um, the prohibition, basically, of hemp. Okay, so um, in, in historical terms, there was, you know, actors that didn't want to see hemp progress. Um, so it became illegal, whatever, in the 1930s. Um, and that, that's, uh, that, oh, sorry. Well, maybe we can just, is that better? Yeah. Yeah, you can hear me. Okay, so um, Basically, the upshot of that was that the hemp industry worldwide, I'm not just talking about Ireland, but worldwide, was stifled completely and utterly. No investment, um, no, nothing, no machinery, no develop, no nothing. So from the last, okay, maybe 10 or 10, 15, 20 years, there's been very little investment. Even in that time, so it's been, the prohibition has been lifted to some degree. Um, the amount of investment into the industry is, is relatively small compared to, let's say, the last hundred years in the dairy industry. Did that make sense? So um, there is a huge potential. Uh, I understand Sean is being a little bit, sort of holding back a little bit on the, uh, the potential, um, and that's understandable. Um, but nonetheless, there is a huge worldwide potential for hemp, um, for hemp. <coughs> In, it's all, in all its shapes and forms. The Hemp Federation's focus, though, is industrial hemp. So there is, so this confusion, I suppose, um, is where there's a crossover between hemp and cannabis. Okay, we are very adamant in the Hemp Federation and the, the whole, in, the industry, uh, the people we're representing, the Hemp Federation, are hemp growers, okay? It's, there isn't, there's a different lobby for the cannabis industry. Um, and a different um, emerging industry actually is what's happening. And what we need to do is protect the hemp industry because it doesn't have the same voice. It doesn't have the same bump behind it right now. It's a smaller industry, whereas the cannabis industry has massive pharmaceutical uh, backing behind it. Um, so it, the industrial hemp um, is the feedstock for a numerous different industrial processes, right? The food, the feed, the fiber, the fuel, and the pharma. I don't want to completely eliminate them from the talk. Um, but they, they, they're all, so hemp becomes the food stock for all of those industries, um, you know, which give the opportunity for multiple possibilities, right? Um, food, the seed, the oil, the juice, the um, Lo loads of different um, foods from there. Each, each, each food, feed, fiber, fuel, and pharma has multiple industries stemming from that. Uh, I couldn't actually go into them. There's, it's, to be honest, hemp is the um, biological equivalent of crude oil. So anywhere when you, uh, where you imagine um, 
crude oil has been used or oil has been used, you know, the petrochemical industry, the plastics, the uh, um, fuel, everything, it's, 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 it's too large to actually go into everything. Um, but it hemp most certainly has a huge impact in the world commodity market. Um, the problems for farmers are also the solutions. Okay, so um, the nature of the food industry is changing. And what's significant about that is that um, the costs of farming, the cost to a small and medium farm um, are far greater than the industrial farming, the, you know, the corporate farm, the corporate farm model. Um, so, um, what am I trying to say? Um, so, while there's a shrinking market, um, there's growing costs, okay, um, for the smaller farmers. And what's happening is the industrial corporate farms are actually really taking over and taking control of the food production. Um, because the smaller farms can no longer compete. It's getting harder and harder to compete. So we're having to be faced with um, food that's coming from, you know, very far away. And the, the idea, we all have to be traceable. Our, our, so every product that's on the uh, supermarket shelves is, every food product is traceable. Okay, and that traceability creates a huge amount of paperwork for every single farmer. But that cost is spread out over a massive quantity of products when you're a massive um, industrial corporate food production. But if you're a small, medium farmer, that cost is much greater to you. Um, so what we need to do is balance that level, that, that playing field, so that, um, right, the problem is this shrinking market and rising costs. So we need to change that around so those problems become our solution. So that, okay, we've got traceability, right? We all agree we need the traceability. So from the animal that's slaughtered or the vegetables that are planted, we can drill right, right into um, where the seed was bought, where the calf was born, whatever. Um, and we need to apply that drilling, if you know what I mean, into to become a benefit for us. So that it, the costs um, for, there may be more people per product, let's say, employed in a smaller industry than there would be in a larger industry. So that becomes a benefit to the person in the shop making a decision on what to buy. They can see clearly on a certification or some kind of a um, traceability. So the traceability goes further than just where this product came from. It becomes a... a um, uh, a traffic light system or a, a certification system where people can earn points um, relating to how economically or how environmentally friendly their product has been produced. So it kind of stacks it up a little bit against the massive big corporations and gives brownie points, let's say, to the smaller producers. Okay? So that, that the shrinking market and the, the growing cost becomes a good thing for the smaller producers. Food has become, food production has become incredibly scientific. So we're the, again drilling into the food value, right? Um, the poly, so it's no longer a cup of coffee, it's the polyphenols we're looking for, or no longer a glass of wine, again the polyphenols, or the mushrooms are now valued for their um, triterpenes, I think they're called. Um, so, but that, that also, again, with, with certainly with hemp, you've got the, the cannabinoids, which is a very valuable commodity. Um, so, I, so hemp can come in here on the scientific level, um, where, where the scientific food production level. Um, the younger demographic, okay, are choosing, di are making different food choices. So, hemp can all, again, hemp can very much easily accommodate that, actually, the biggest demograph of people buying um, non-animal protein, for instance, is actually meat eaters themselves. They're choosing to, you know, maybe two, one or two days a week to choose something different. So um, we get, again, we need to harvest that. So the protein within the hemp or in the hemp products is a tremendous uh, source of protein. Um, 
again, so we can, so we can um, accommodate the choices of, it's not just a younger dem demographic, but everybody can benefit from uh, hemp protein. Um, and it's time to take advantage of the global hemp trend. I, I, I mean, it really, f if we were to sit back a little and just look at what's going on in the hemp industry worldwide, um, and, and it's very important to separate um, sorry, the hemp industry from the cannabis industry uh, because it is a different, completely, completely and utterly different industry. Um, but the hemp industry, again, is a massively growing internationally traded commodity. I mean, it's, it's just, it's burgeoning all over the world. Um, and whilst currently, and I'll go into this just a little bit more, um, Actually, as of two weeks ago, hemp is practically prohibited in this country. You can, you can grow it all right and you can grow it for fiber, but for food, it's pretty much prohibited. And um, because the amount of THC that's allowed in food is so tiny now, um, it's you can always say, almost say it's prohibitive. So, uh, so for any farmer who's looking to come into this industry right now with a CBD product or a food product, they have to be incredibly careful. They have to know what they're doing. And, it's, and actually, it's very, very limiting. And if, whilst I'm in the industry for 20 years, if I was looking at the industry today, I might be looking very carefully at whether to invest another 20, the next 20 years of my life mm -hmm. into this industry under the circumstances at the moment. Um, so, uh, yeah, we need to get this, we need to support the industry and, the, the, and this is what's important about the fact that this is the first industry-led uh, conference actually because there is no government agenda here today, there's no pharmaceutical agenda here today. Um, so we can actually give you information and, and receive information on where we are actually going with this industry. So again, so the damage caused by prohibition, right? In one sense, I am talking about the broader, you know, available drugs. But unfortunately, currently, hemp is, it isn't on one hand falling into it, but it is in terms of the Food Safety Authority and the Gardaí and many of the actors that are in, well, they're not actually in the industry, they're outside the industry. Um, so the, so uh, the reality is the damage caused by prohibition has triggered, there's no, uh, so, uh, you know what, I'm not actually, I'm not discussing whether or not drugs are bad or whether there's um, danger or damage done with any particular drug. That, that's not what we're, we're actually discussing here and there's no actual contention there. But what is in discussion right now is actually prohibition and where prohibition has led us, right? So it has triggered the work, prohibition has, I won't say single-handedly, but darn, I just said it, uh, triggered the worst crime, crime wave, cr crime wave in history, without question of doubt. It has created a black market with massive incentives to hook both adults and children alike. Just, you need to think about these things just a little. And you'll see where I'm going uh, with this now in a, in a minute. Um, it has made dangerous substance, substances available in schools and communities and prisons. This is prohibition now, remember. It has raised gang warfare to a level never seen before. And we're all familiar with what's going on um, in the drug world. It has an impact. It has removed many important human rights and civil liberties of the individuals that prohibition claims to represent. We can see that in our prisons. Um, it has put previously unknown harmful contaminated drugs on the streets. It has escalated thefts, muggings and burglaries. 
It has diverted scarce law enforcement resources. Where are our Gardaí and what are they doing? It has overcrowded and obstructed the courts and prisons. Just spend a half an hour in the courts and you'll see that very clearly. It has evolved, and this is important actually, evolved local gangs into international enterprises with intricate power structures that reach into every corner of society, controlling vast swathes of territory with significant social and military resources at their disposal. These are the impacts of prohibition. Okay. If prohibition of hemp continues, it will limit the growth of the Irish hemp industry by restricting access to state supports, banking, insurance and investment. I mean, we're actually already there. That's where we are. Uh, we have been stymied. We've had roadblocks for the past 20 years. It's been a constant battle to um, get past all the sanctions that have been uh, against the industry. The, the licensing system alone is um, a, pro, a prohibition, actually, for farmers, a prohibitive um, barrier, yeah, to farmers to come into the industry. Okay? So if, if prohibition of hemp continues, it will exclude Irish farmers from a rapidly growing global hemp food sector. Okay, so the whole world is going to take advantage of what's going on if we, if the Food Safety Authority and the Gardaí insist on prohibiting the micro amounts of THC that are in hemp foods in this country. And this is an, I just, so up till two weeks ago, we were in a kind of gray area. Now we're even in a more gray area, actually, to be honest with you. This is a cup of coffee. This is a regular cup of coffee, you know, what you just make for yourself at home. I don't know if you can see the difference. This is what, this is what, this is what the government is now telling us <laughs> is a cup of coffee in, in terms of uh, what's um, safe, for us to have, so the, the safe THC in food now is as weak, uh, are insignificant actually, and um, it, it's not it's not that I'm looking for a high from my food. It's that I'm looking for the benefits, the uh, the health benefits from um, hemp. The a bioavailability of hemp um, is tremendous, has tremendous benefits to uh, the hemp industry. So this is. 50 times weaker, this is what they're telling us now, 50 times, which is quite significant, um, a, a, a jump, when they didn't even ask anybody in the industry what was their advice, what, was, what, what would they consider safe, it was just whack straight into what, what the Food Safety Authority decided um, without any real um, science science and making kind of, you know, uh, questionable ch claims and uh, to qu actually we could question the science behind their, uh, I call it prohibition actually, because we're at um, one, point 0.1 of a milligram uh, of um, THC. Um, I don't know whether you're familiar with um, the difference between grams, milligrams, and micrograms. Um, both of these little jars have a gram of powder. It's just one is turmeric and the other is just some hemp powder. Uh, and there's a gram in both of these. So um, just to give you a, a kind of a, a visual or a context, um, one, there is a thousand grams there's a thousand milligrams, sorry, in a gram, right? So to get a milligram, we have to divide this by a thousand. I don't know, can you see the amount of, do you want me to pass it around? Yeah. Yeah, just pass it to them around. So, oh, right, right enough. Okay, well, if you don't want to, it's fine. Okay, so you can come and take a look at it yourselves. So, 
there is a thousand, a thousand milligrams in a gram. And in one gram, in one, sorry, milligram. there's a thousand milligrams in a gram. And in one milligram, there's a thousand micrograms, okay? So the difference between a gram and a microgram is one million, a factor of one million, right? So there's one million micrograms in that gram. A, a speck of dust might weigh a microgram. You're not going to see it, not particularly. You might under a microscope. So that's what we're talking about. That the, the FSAI has given us permission to put a hundred micrograms, okay? One hundred of those little specks of dust are now um, available for us in our hemp foods, right? Traces, it's tiny, it is, it's, it's insignificant. Oh, sorry, where am I? Um, <coughs> So, so sorry, oh, that's yeah, going along by itself. Uh, per milliliter. Just clarify, yeah. per, 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 per 0.1 of a milligram, 100 micrograms per what? Uh, per day, per body, per, per day. Per, per individual, per, per day, person. yeah. Yes. Per person, per day, yeah. It's, it's not, sorry, can we keep the questions to the end? I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you in the, at the end, yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, so, so, the pro so to continue with the prohibition, um, it's just, we're, we're, uh, with the f the we're going to support um, the flawed government policy which takes its lead from corporate facing actors, new to, and I might add, poorly disposed to the hemp industry. Um, and we will be responsible for the loss of a significant positive impact on the regeneration and the socio-economic integration of a collapsing, of the collapsing rural communities. So hemp has a huge potential here. Um, with the right um, uh, information, the right support behind it. Um, it will also be, so if we continue with the prohibition, we'll be responsible for the loss of the economic supports to encourage small, high-quality producers of value-added finished products for internal and export markets across the supply chain. That'll be lost. And be responsible for the catastrophic environmental damage caused by unsustainable corporate-facing agri-industries. So we continue on, on an unsustainable path, down a path that's already leading us into a crisis. And um, prolong the human deficiency, actually, and this is interesting, uh, of cannabinoids from the recommended daily um, intake uh, allowance, uh, the required list for minerals and vitamins. So actually cannabinoids should be on that list. Currently they are not. Also, also just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from with the whole idea of prohibition, um, there's many pro there's many substances that could easily, given the same criteria, the same scientific, you know, um, studies. Let's say the same scrutiny. scrutiny yeah, exactly. Um, they might end up finding themselves banned as well. So like caffeine, I mean, s caffeine, I'll just go on through them really quickly because I know I'm being told I've minutes left. Caffeine, alcohol, um, or tobacco, sugar, um, nutmeg, myristicin as a hallucinogenic, oddly enough, and poppy seeds, we all know poppy seeds. 10 micrograms is considered safe of the codeine and morphine that's in poppy seeds. 10, that's 10 times what's considered safe THC. And we're allowed. Uh, cheese contains um, tryptophan, which makes you feel uh, relaxed and calm. Didn't have my cheese this morning. Um, red meat also contains tryptophan. So, I mean, th th it's the vocabulary around um, these. These are in the foods. The, these are, we eat these foods to, to feel a positive, to feel the positive effect, not only from the nutrition, but from the actual, well, why do we all love chocolate? Why do we all love chocolate? Uh, there, cocoa contains an an anandamide. Uh, and tryptophan, actually. Um, ananda means bliss. That's what ananda means. It's the an amide is protein, so it's the bliss protein um, in cocoa. 
Um, a broad beans have a substance or a molecule called L-DOPA, which is used, uh, is psychoactive, used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. So these are, these, I mean, this is a tiny list compared to what's actually out there in our foods. What we are, and this is where I'm saying the, the science of food is changing, right? Um, and so what was a problem for us now, actually we can highlight where the, the language around THC, the language around hemp, the language around cannabis is very provocative, let's say. When we, just, we talk about uh, caffeine or sugar, it's a mood enhancer. When we talk about um, cannabis or THC, it's a toxin. You know, so, you know we have to be equal, uh, uh, just equal the language. These companies, I know it's probably not terribly clear, but you'll have no problem recognizing who they are. These are the corporate facing industries I'm talking about, food producers. Um, none of these companies have any qualms about using caffeine, sugar, whatever. I mean, actually, if you want to know how addictive sugar is, try giving it up. Try giving sugar up and you'll know very clearly uh, how addictive it actually is. And yet, it's okay, there's sugar tax on certain foods, but it's accepted. There is no language around sugar that makes it incendiary, let's say. So to future-proof the hemp industry, um, we need to actually disentangle ourselves from the history of prohibition, from the historic language around hemp, around THC. And we need to challenge the claims that the FSAI, the FSAI are making and create a sensible legislation. So if, if they had have come before they wrote the report, if they had come to the industry, they would have got a much more balanced view. Actually, the um, international, an international Narcotic. narcotics control board um, they, well, first of all, they say hemp isn't, isn't on the list. It doesn't fall under um, the Control of Drugs Act. Um, and it's misleading to put it under there. But these corporate actors purposely mislead governments, uh, government agencies, um, so that they can bring in their own agenda, actually, is the truth of what's going on. Um, we need to, we need the opportunity to really reduce, <laughs> reduce the, to uh, or release rather the, um, the jewel that hemp actually is. It's really important, it has a huge value. Um, I'll just rush through this. Um, the industry needs upwards, any small industry to get started needs upwards of a thousand acres. Okay, so that's where we're at. There, I don't think uh, there may be one or two industries in the country that are close to a thousand acres. But you know, to get the to get enough product behind you to go to market, you're going, you're talking about a thousand. It doesn't matter what your product is. It doesn't matter at all. You're going to need, a, you know, to really hit the world market. You're going to need a thousand acres at least. Hemp can outpay. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put a figure out, figure on it, Sean. But hemp can outpay any other agricultural crop. No question. If we are allowed the value that's there, okay? Um, the Global Abundance Program, which Marcus will talk about, is another way of future-proofing the industry. It's a very interesting, um, I, th I don't think he's gonna touch on it for much, but he he'll give you a little bit more information about this Global Abundance Program and the regenerative farming that which Sean has talked about. Ireland will be, will, sorry, will Ireland be First to market, or will we just lag behind and lose, miss an opportunity? That, and in order to, do, to take up the opportunity, we have to be prepared to put a little bit of effort in. It's not, like Sean said, it isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to take a couple of years. We need to um, get the experience, um, become hemp farmers. So that doesn't happen overnight, for sure. So, uh, Kevin, this is, I'm just going to read a poem. And then there's a little video at the end that I wanted to show you. Um, this, this poem is written by Gordon Mackey. He's um, an octogenarian. 
He is an interest, has a great interest in the hemp industry. He is from Mackey's Engineering. Some of you might be familiar with Mackey's Engineering. They were so second to Harland and Wolf in Belfast. Uh, I think that the business or the company sold, <coughs> sold out in, in the 70s. Gordon was the last director of, Gordon, of Mackey Enterprises. So um, he's also a champion, a hemp champion, let's say. Okay, so, and I thought his poem, he sent this to me just during the week. I thought it was, uh, it was a nice poem. And you'll, you'll understand the significance. It's called Fifth Generation or 5G. The internet of things is on its way. So what the hell, I hear you say. But stop to think of what comes next when all your needs are hypertext. Each loaf has a tracker chip, each move made reported. Iris scans, predictive plans, imagination thwarted. Debit cards will be the rule. Cashless trade is the goal. Dollar stash or crypto cash, credit access on parole. It ferrets out your secrets or how one views the state. When your social worth is tallied, software d dictates your fate. Privacy down the shredder, freedom stolen one by one. You'll learn to love Big Brother when there's nowhere left to run. I watched the future coming. It kicked me on the shins. The hive minds taking over unless rebellion wins. So, yeah, thanks. Um, is the film? Yes, it should be ready. So this is just, is, yeah, I think it's actually quite succinct. Uh, mm, it speaks for itself. It's, yeah, it speaks for itself. Prohibition. Yes. <laughs> prohibition. Uh, yeah. Prohibition is dangerous. Made by the prohibition people in Germany, um, but it's, it says it all. It brings it all in. It, it's there. Don't be fooled. Don't think that um, that's not happening. It very much is. Okay. Yes. I think you have any more slides? No, just so, thank you at the end.